begin our discussion in economics, we always start with scarcity. Uh, scarcity is simply the excess of human wants over what can actually be produced to fulfill these wants. So it is a fundamental problem that all society face, and the reason is simple, that human wants are unlimited. On the other hand, the means to fulfilling these wants are limited because resources that we use to uh, make these goods are limited. If the resources were unlimited, we will not have any problem because then all our wants can be satisfied. But the problem is this, that in the real world resources, which are land, labor, capital, all of these resources are limited. And because of the fact that they're limited and because of scarcity, we know that people have to now make choices because their wants are otherwise not fulfilled and because of their limited resources they can only buy or fulfill some of their wants and therefore they need to make choices the ones that they prefer the most or they want the most will be fulfilled before the others in other words everyone needs to prioritize their consumption of whatever commodities they need or would like to have as they cannot satisfy all their wants and this is not only true for individuals, it's also true at the national level. Each individual must choose which goods and services they want to consume, but also the government at the national level may need to also decide because now the resources are limited. They need to figure out which sort of goods to produce and which to not produce. So scarcity is, is rampant and every one of us is basically making choices in order to make sure that we prioritize our consumption. Because of scarcity, we come to a very important concept of economic versus free goods. The resources that are scarce, that is limited in supply, are called economic goods, while those which are unlimited in supply are called free goods. A good example of economic good would be, for example, anything that you buy from a market because it has a price. This means it is economic good because of the fact that this is limited supply. On the other hand, something which is a free good could be oxygen that we breathe, could be seawater. All of these examples of those goods where they are unlimited in supply and therefore there's no price for you to consume, for example, ocean water or sea water. Another way to look at economic goods is through the lens of opportunity cost. What is opportunity cost? Well, opportunity cost is the foregone alternative of the choice that we ultimately make. What do we mean by this? Well, we believe that economic goods result in opportunity cost, which means that when we decide to choose one alternative, we may not decide to choose another alternative and that the alternative that we decide not to choose becomes our opportunity cost. A good way to look at it is, for example, let's say you're choosing A-level economic subjects and let's say you have to choose four and let's say the four subjects that you've chosen is economic, maths, um, bio and chemistry. But let's say you were confused whether you should take physics or bio. And if you decide to take bio and not physics, then the subject physics will become the opportunity cost. It's the next best alternative for gone, which simply means that it is a good that you decide not to choose ultimately, although it was in your con consumption preference, you liked it, but there was something else that you liked more or may be giving you more benefit and as a result you chose that. Now, the idea is this, that when you're looking at your options and when you are looking at making choices and when you are weighing your choices and looking at opportunity costs, the next best alternatives, hopefully you're making a decision that is where you are satisfying your wants fully. And, and that is basically what we call economic decision making. So what we say is that scarcity will lead to choice and that choice will ultimately lead to opportunity cost, which is the next best alternative for gone, the choice that you decide not to take because you like something else. Let's do another example of opportunity cost. Let's say you have a tree and you have an option that from that tree you can make a table or you can make 25 books. So now we have two options where you're making a table or 25 books. Now, if you decide to make the 
a table from the tree which means you decide not to make for example 25 books this means the opportunity cost for us of of making a table will be 25 books so we look at any resource or allocation of a resource with the lens of opportunity cost in order to understand whether we are making the right choices or not now why did we go for table versus 25 books because we may believe that the benefit we get from producing a table will be more than the benefit we can get from let's say producing 25 books and therefore by finding out this alternative for our opportunity cost we are making sure we are utilizing our tree in the maximum possible return manner so we're getting the maximum possible return from our resource because we know exactly what the opportunity cost or next best alternative was and by weighing our options we've chosen something which was worthwhile or more useful for the individual or for the economy or government or whoever is owning that factor of production.